guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight and you guys have been asking and asking for this one. So this week we're going to talk about the bumblebee goby. Now there are nine different species of bumblebee goby. So today we're going to be talking about the one I have here, which I believe is Brachygobius doriae, although it was sold to me as aggregatus. Needless to say, they are found in both fresh and brackish waters, though the ones that I have on hand were collected in full fresh water. Now, there's been a recent craze and trend towards dwarf puffers, but I think these guys are absolutely just as cute, easier to feed, easier to sex, and way appropriate for a planted nanotank. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. So it's obvious where these guys get their name. And one thing I want to mention right off the bat is sexing. In the bottom left hand corner you can see a fish that has a substantial amount of yellow coloration. Those are the boys. Makes it super easy and that color gets extremely, extremely vivid after a water change. The females are largely black and white. Now these guys are awesome because they only get an inch to an inch and a quarter in adult complete length. And while they are a territorial fish, these are ones that are really best kept in groups of six or more. In an ideal world, you would have more females than males, but you know, as long as you have enough territory set up, i.e., you know, different caves, areas of driftwood, or planted sections, they really do very, very awesome. These guys come from Borneo and in Indonesia, where they inhabit both fresh and brackish waters. Knowing where they were collected from, or at least what type of water they were collected from, really tells you what you need. But as a general rule of thumb, the vast majority do quite well in fresh water. If you wanted to keep them in any salt, you can add a few teaspoons per gallon of salt and they'll enjoy that. Because they come from areas that have both fresh and salt water, generally the water has a bit more hardness and a pH of 7 all the way up to 8.5. Now they can take a temperature range from the low 70s to mid 80s or 22 to 28 degrees Celsius. As I mentioned, their max length is 25 to 35 millimeters or one, to, one inch to about an inch and a quarter. Now unlike dwarf puffers, these guys are not nearly as snarky to each other, though similar to dwarf puffers, it's best to keep them in a species tank just to make sure that these slow, unassuming fish don't get outcompeted for food. On the note of food, I like to feed them a range of live or frozen foods, though this particular group has readily been accepting my Sarah GBG mix as well as the O-Nip. I'll go grab some frozen food to show you how they feed. These guys really, really, really are fun to feed and keep, and I just think they're absolutely adorable with that bumblebee patterning. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and dropped in a frozen cube of Daphnia, which is a good sized food for these guys. It'll slowly fall through the water column and then you'll notice that everybody starts getting really excited and darting around to eat. Now I have a whole lot of these little guys in this aquarium and I've not noticed any issues with aggression. Part of that is probably overcrowding, but a lot of it is that they're really relatively mild mannered. You can see that the boys are really firing up yellow with this frozen food and are absolutely stunning. These really, I really am enjoying these way more than I have my experiences with dwarf puffers. And I hope a bunch of you give them a shot as well. I mean, look how cute they are. Absolutely adorable. Now, if I were to be setting up a maintenance tank for these guys, I would probably use a fine gravel or a sand as my substrate, a bunch of tangled driftwood or even rock formations and a bunch of plants. And this just allows them to establish their territories because these guys are cave spawners, meaning that the male will bring the female into his cave, she'll deposit the eggs, he'll fertilize them, and then the male actually guards the babies until they hatch. Now I haven't bred this species, but everything I read said it takes four to nine days for the babies to hatch, with nine being more on the average side. I think I'm gonna have to set up a little tank just to try it on my own because I am so enamored with these little beauties. They are just so darn cute. 
all in all, I think this is a fish that is largely overlooked as an excellent, excellent alternative to a dwarf puffer fish. And they're certainly, certainly beautiful, relatively easy to feed, and so far, according, at least in my experience, super easy to keep. Now, I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing and learning a little bit more about this species. I think for the rest of this month, I'm really going to focus on some of the plecos for you guys, so make sure you have hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I'm going to show you how to set up a tank, how to feed them, and more about some of the species. It's going to be a lot of fun. But back to the bumblebee gobies. Again, they're small, they're beautiful, they're easy to feed, and absolutely rewarding little fish. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. As always, let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.